Man, it is absolutely stinking hot today. 38 degrees for orange, that is ridiculous. We are, I don't think we've had 38 degrees in years. Years and years, which is, if you guys are in America, is around about, well it is 100 degrees Fahrenheit, so, stinking hot. Anyway, it was my son's birthday the other day and we got him a little totem pole. I don't know what to think about leaving it in the lawn. Check out that pole, man. That's a big coral. Oh no, you did. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Alrighty, so one of my all time favorite topics is how to water your lawn properly because a lot of people struggle with this. Oh, you'll be surprised how many times I get the question, how much do I water my lawn? Why is my lawn looking so bad? Is it grubs, is it this, is it that? And generally it's normally, well, not enough water in your lawn. So today we're gonna to talk about that. I'm gonna tell you guys how much water to put down, how to see signs of stress. We'll talk about a couple of different sprinkler systems, etc., and the way to figure out how much you know your sprinklers are putting out as well. So let's dive into it. So if you're watering your lawn properly, your lawn's not actually gonna need as much water as you think. So the biggest key is to make sure you give your lawn deep waters and infrequent waters as well. So that means a deep water is basically gonna be half an inch every single time that you water. So about 13 mil if you're using the good old metric system, which is superior. So you're gonna do that each time you water is one water like that. Now, cool season grass in the middle of summer, you can do that two to three times a week. For example, I'm doing it, I've been doing it one time a week, but since we're getting 38 degree days, I might have to do it twice this week because I am seeing signs of stress on this lawn. I only watered it two days ago, but I'll show you guys that in a minute. If you've got a warm season lawn, you can get away with half an inch to an inch per week. So make sure you only put down again that half an inch of water each time. Now, if you've got a newly established lawn, this is a question I've got a lot of the time, it will need a bit more water for the first year because it's gonna be like a training period for your lawn. Make sure you do stress it out a little bit though and make it go a little bit blue. We'll talk about what it looks like when it's blue in a minute. Um, but you'll find that it will need more water because your roots are gonna be a lot shorter. Now, at work, we've brought in a lot of golf greens over the years, like as in reseeded them. Um, started from scratch and I always find the first year is always going to be your hardest year and the year that you're going to have to establish it and you know get a good routine in place but you find the next year it's going to be so so much better because you're training those roots to go deeper because you're deep, giving it deep waters those roots are going to start shooting down deeper and deep, deeper and start searching for water so letting it dry out isn't always a bad thing. Now the best way to check um, how much your sprinklers actually put out when you are watering them so how much milliliters you're getting per hour, whatever you want to figure it out as. You have to do a bit of a test in your yard. Now I was going to show you guys today, but I don't really have any containers or anything that have a nice flat bottom. I only have this one glass, and even still, it's got a bit of a rounded edge. So you want something that's got a nice flat bottom, and it's straight up and down, or you can buy catch cups from irrigation shops, etc. But um, basically, or tuna cans work really well. You can use tuna cans as well, because they've got a nice flat bottom on them. But basically, you want to put these around your yard. You want to probably get at least four or five of them, and put them in random spots around your yard and then basically from there make sure they're a meter away from your sprinkler as well just so a meter or more than a meter if you want just make sure they're at least a meter away from your sprinklers place them around your yard and put your sprinklers on for about six minutes once you've done that pull them away turn the sprinklers off obviously and then you want to get a tape measure or a ruler or something and measure how many mil is in your what's that called container glass and from there, what you want to do is so you measure them all, write down how much they are, add those all together, and divide it by the amount of catch cups you basically put out there. So if you did five, divide it by five. That's what we're going to do there. And since we did it for six minutes the water, we then times that by 10, and that will give you how many mil that you put out of your sprinklers per hour. That's the best way to figure it out from there. Nice and simple. So remember, you want to aim to get to about 13 mil, or as I said, half an inch each time you water. So with my sprinkler system, I know that it takes about an hour and 10 minutes to get me about half an inch. So that's how long I water for. So that's with those MP rotors, which have that nice, um, uh, like slow dispersion of the water. I don't know what the technical term is. I'm not doing well today in this heat. But yeah, if you've got a sprinkler, which um, like an impact sprinkler chunks a, bit, chunks a bit more out, you'll find that it'll put the water out a bit quicker as well. All right, so most important point from that is make sure you do those deep infrequent waterings every single week. Make sure you do that 13 mil or half an inch, whatever you want to call it. Don't split them in half over a couple of days. Make sure you do the big one so you teach your lawn to actually, you know, the roots in your lawn to train and get nice and deep. Nothing deep. So yeah, let's talk about the signs of stress now, eh? 
Alrighty, so I'm not sure how well you guys can see this on camera. I did water this a couple of seconds ago as well. Um, but this area here is a little bit dry and it's gone a little bit blue. It's only just starting to show signs now of heat stress basically. So generally you can see footprints in it. I'm not sure if you can see them on camera. But your footprints won't stand back up like they normally do on your grass. They sort of just lay down and will stay there until it gets some nice water on your lawn. So what I like to do with patches like that, because your whole lawn won't do this, um, so if you can stretch it a couple of days as well, hand water those patches if you can, if there are any spots to go every now and then, and give your lawn a nice deep water, you know, when the whole lawn starts stressing a little bit, or when you do for your next watering cycle. Yeah, so that patch down there was only really just starting to go blue. Um, there's some patches over the, on the fence, which have actually gone beyond blue, so I'll show you. There's different stages, it goes blue, from there it starts going like really black, bluey grey, starts going a little bit brown, and it gets really brown, which is when you really know that your lawn's dry. You know, I'll flip the camera around. So if you look just here, this has gone beyond blue, um, and basically it's starting to die. So I've got to get some water on this ASAP before it really does die out. And now the reason why this area here, and you can see little spots like that as well, that's previously died off, so that's actually dead, those areas. But there's still um, salvageable because we've got some green shoots in there. But Guess what it would be? It's a reflection from your fence. So you'll always find along fences, you know, sheds, windows as well. You'll find that those sections always dried a little bit quicker. And then the spots I always hand water first before I chuck a watering cycle on. So sometimes I come out this time of year and give those sections maybe hand water like every two days. Um, and even put some wetting agent in a watering can as well. Just because those spots struggle just that little bit more, so they need a little bit more attention. So You've really got to know how your yard works um, and get used to all the spots that dry out because I've always found those spots dry out more and more. Maybe you have a spot that sprinklers don't hit properly. Just keep an eye out. Make sure you check in the yard every single afternoon if you've got the time. We don't always have the time. And just check what sections are starting to go that bluey colour. But let me show you a good example of some blue, blue grass out the front which is always struggling because of the reflection from the windows. Okay, so we're out the front now, and the front is definitely stressing more. I can show you quite a few blue patches out here. Um, and you still can't see it very well on camera. But it's starting to go really with the blue, blue across here, and it always does because of that window from the afternoon sun, which is still up pretty high. Um, but, oh, here we go. hope you guys can see this. Here are some blue patches here. That's all starting to wilt off, and this section always gets a bit hotter. Um, in between here and here because of the reflection of you know the road heat surrounding the road um, and the concrete pass as well here and there um, and I think there is some concrete um, underneath as well oh <laughs> it's mad over there but yeah that is a prime example of some blue blue open lawn from dry if I step on it you guys see how my footprints are sticking there and they're not going away yeah definitely dry just there so I'll come out and hand water that you know after I finish shooting this video because it is stressing well you could see it's not going to die if you leave it like that for another couple of hours or to your morning watering cycle but yeah you know I don't like to risk it sometimes with 38 degree heat it's just flipping hot all right I've spoken to you guys about this countless times before but if you're new here we'll talk about it quickly again so if you want to extend your watering days or get a bit more retention of moisture in your soil, a good thing to use is wetting agent because wetting agent is going to help retain that moisture in the soil. Well, another thing it's also going to do is help break down hydrophobic soil. So this time of year it gets really, really hot, um, which is why I'm struggling right now. And you actually get a bit of a waxy surface on the top of your soil from the heat um, radiating in there and just creates that waxy surface. So this is actually going to help break down that waxy surface. It's sort of like a dishwashing liquid, works sort of the same way. It's gonna break the surface tension and you're gonna get moisture back down into your soil again. So I use this currently monthly, even every three weeks at the moment, just cause it is so hot. I'm actually due to apply this again, which is why I think I'm getting a lot of those isolated dry patches around the lawn in areas that I don't normally see, is because there's a bit of hydrophobic soil about. So make sure you get yourself a great turf, I stress turf registered, wetting agent as well because the ones like sea salt on that um, I've had a lot of friends use it 
and a couple of clients as well and they found it just hasn't been as great as your turf wetting agents. Now I know a lot of people don't have automatic irrigation systems. If you don't have one I recommend you do. It'll save you time and money in the long run because you're going to get water dispersed properly across your yard and it's going to hit areas properly. Now I know guys live in rentals and it's just sometimes out of your budget so if that doesn't work for you there's heaps of sprinklers of bunnings out on the market that you can use i've talked to you guys about impact sprinklers before which are those mad old school ones that go hoselink did send me a sprinkler as well which i want to show you guys um because you guys know that i got this hoselink reel from hoselink i'll tell you what makes hand watering a thousand times easier so much better i actually enjoy hand watering now get out there with a nice beverage get the hoselink out and just i look forward to coming home and hand watering sections of my lawn. Let me show you guys the sprinkler. Stop, enough rambling. Um, here is oh, the sprinkler that Hoselink sent me. You can tell I've used it a few times. Um, mostly for the boys running around in it because I don't really need it at home. I'm going to use it for an upcoming project though out the front which I'll show you guys in the future which I'm keen to use it for that. But let's just show you guys how it works and just talk to you guys about what I think about it. Alrighty, so if you already have a Hoselink system Mad easy, oh, is that off or on? Oh, it's on. Um, if you already have a hose link system, all you have to do is just slip it in and then you can just turn it on there or you can t turn on the tap, do whatever you want to do. Um, but basically, easy as that. If you don't have hose link fittings or you don't have a hose link um, reel, you can just screw this off. Um, I hope that's, yeah, screw it off here, like so. And just use one of your normal um, sprinkler fittings there like your hose to the little thing that screws in there um, but yeah it's a really solid um, sprinkler to be honest I've seen the ones from Bunnings and mate solid things that I like about this is you can actually adjust your arc with this this here so obviously it's only going to arc between those two points there we, we can adjust it all the way out um, which is believe it or not pretty handy you can also adjust where the water spurts out from. So you see these little holes here, you can shut them on and off. So there's three at the end to do. And you can also do it at the top there as well. And you can also adjust your flow if you need to. So if you've got a really tiny area and you don't need to shoot it so far, you can adjust your flow there with that also. So a good little sprinkler. So I'll just turn it on and show you guys how it works. So as you can see, it shoots out nice fine droppers which is what you want because you get a nice um, slow soaking on your lawn Ooh, you can actually see that blue patch just over there on camera I think oh, it's hit me it's hit me oh crap it hit me <laughs> see that's how that works there you can adjust the flow rate obviously down a bit you can hear that but often you can obviously push these so you can just do a smaller area as well to hit me again it's gonna hit me but i tell you what it shoots pretty far like i'm standing a good about six meters away and it's just missed me that's more like seven meters let me step it one two three four well, i'll say eight or nine meters actually i'm really good checking out meters anyway that's it that one just there so if you do want one of these i do actually have a code um for hose link and all their sprinklers on there it's just i think it's sprinklers 10 i will just double check for you guys right now ah yep it's sprinkler 10 all capitals i'll put it on the screen below anyway okay that is hit, that's hitting my feet so it is shooting pretty far that's about 10 meters i reckon which is cool um i'll link down below also hose links promotional video on the sprinkler itself because they probably go a bit more in depth than me because I'm really technical but yeah sprinkler 10 here's that code if you want to get something from there one of their sprinklers and they are compatible with all hoses as well not just the hose link reel all right I just want to do a quick little test with this sprinkler down my side section as well because it's pretty thin and long so let's just see if we can get adjusted enough so that it just sort of doesn't hit the fences or the house Alrighty, so we'll turn those little sections off just there sweet as and then I might bring the flow down just in case and we'll flick it on and run. Yeah. Oh, no, nice. Can't quite get it thin enough for that area. I wonder if I could turn the flow down anymore. Let's flow up. 
No, that's slow, a bit of an So you couldn't really use it down your side section. Um, yeah, which is a bummer. But really good for a nice wide open area. And not good for there because, you know, <laughs> it's hitting the roof and hitting the neighbor's place as well. So we'll turn that off. Alrighty guys, so I'm gonna wrap the video up there, but I'm really, really passionate about this topic. So if you guys are struggling with it, let me know in the comments below and ask me a few questions if you like. But I'll tell you what, the two biggest things you need to do in your lawn is basically get the watering right and mow often, and you're gonna find you can have a pretty good lawn. I mean, you can get away with not fertilizing and stuff and your lawn's gonna be pretty great. I mean, if there's not weeds everywhere, then you know, you sort of fix the issue. But yeah, watering and mowing are the most important things. So I'm really, really passionate about this topic. So yeah, ask me some questions if you get stuck. But yeah, thanks guys so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Um, like this video if you enjoyed it. Do you have a good week? It's really nice actually. Oh, it's a bit cold. Oh, no. Wet t-shirt content. Oh. Sweaty. Oh. Oh. Totally worth it.